Unreal Engine is amazing and it is always developing. We have always got our eyes out for amazing demos, but show us where graphics are going in video games. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 20 Unreal Engine 5 demos that will blow your mind. Starting off at number 20, a demo from Ramon Monsanto called Raining in the Jungle Part 2. Now, this might as well be video footage of a jungle with rain in it. You could legit set a film here and people wouldn't think, oh, that's fake, except for the fact that the rain is a little heavy. The details in the grass, the way the soil has absorbed water, it's genuinely a work of art. At number 19 is demonstration of a feature called Nanite. If you're unaware, it's a means of replicating and implementing surfaces by programming rather than by modeling all of it. And it allows for you to have a lot more on screen at any given time. Someone by the name of Tabasco Dev used Nanite in Unreal Engine 5 to put 25 million hamburgers onto the screen on a low end PC, just to demonstrate how incredible this type of thing is. Now, it's not as though it runs perfectly or anything, but considering it's a low-end PC with a frankly stupid amount of hamburgers on screen and that it's not chugging along as though it is the end times is extremely impressive. At number 18 is this architecture channel that is just doing this amazing interior work. It's a channel that started as Unreal Engine 4 architecture because if you remember, there were lots of demos that came out showing how good Unreal can handle interiors. Well, it can do it better now. This architecture channel made this demo called UE5 ArcViz Lighting Test, just showing various different types of lighting in a home setting. And frankly, it just looks like a bunch of photography. I mean, if you didn't see them playing around with the various aspects of it, I think that you would not be able to distinguish this from a photograph if you were not specifically someone extremely familiar with 3D modeling. Just all the various materials, the linoleum, the cloth, the plastic, how everything refracts and interacts with light. It's just shocking that this can be done in real time. This looks more real than any computer generated film from the last several decades. At number 17 is a test from Anne Vu designed to test out two various features. First, Nanite, which we talked about a little already. Nanite being a feature that allows for a lot of different stuff to be on screen without taxing the system so much. Anne Vu talking about having a fairly mediocre graphics card and running this thing off of a hard drive, not a solid state, claiming that this thing should have at least a few billion polygons and the ray tracing lumens just looks insane. Insane. At number 16 is a test from HAL 00117 showing a Skyrim in Unreal Engine 5 and just wow. It's the Western Watchtower just retextured with all of this nature around it. Flowing cloth flags, beautiful lighting effects, weather. It makes you think, wow, if only they'd stop using that damn creation engine. Because it really is beautiful to see something so familiar, so iconic in the world of gaming as an area of Skyrim looking this good. I mean, seriously, just look at the lighting and the shadows. There's just nothing like that in Skyrim. Apparently, this one uses nanite and displacement maps. Everything is apparently a primitive object, which is kind of insane. At number 15 is this K70 Soviet Moto, a uh, motorcycle, old timey one, on a desert background, sort of in a low light situation where we see the light on and we see the various rocks and sort of dry plants of a desert. Again, I think that to the untrained eye, this can be very indistinguishable from a photo until you get a little bit close where you can see, and I don't think this is a limitation of the engine at all, but that some of the objects on the bike are a little bit lower poly on than you might expect, but even going further back, you can't even tell. Just the way everything reacts so naturally is so impressive here. The artist is Ostap Gordon, and really, it is a beautiful example of how incredible this thing can look. And number 14 is another one from Ostrup Gordon. This is an ancient temple designed to test the limits of lumen and nanite, which gives us this truly amazing natural looking structure combined with what looks like very old stonework. And the way that light handles itself in this situation, thanks to lumen, just makes it feel like you're looking at video footage from somebody exploring some old place that they're just entering for the first time. You have overgrowth, you have have this reflecting light that's just like overexposing itself on the camera. It really just looks like real. 
At number 13 is what Melheim Sphere calls a Nanite Overload. They're running an RTX 3070, so it's obviously a hefty card, but they take these Mega Scans assets, which if you're not familiar, are these objects scanned from real life, and apply a little gravity simulation on some rocks to make it so that they fall and create motion and seam. But what Melheim Sphere is highlighting here is that you can literally have billions, billions of polygons at no cost. I mean, this is a consumer PC running in real time what looks like something that would be frankly high quality enough to be in a 3D animated film easily. At number 12, you are not looking at some of the most beautiful footage of mountains you've ever seen. You are looking at a computer simulation. You knew that already because these various demonstrations are some of the most impressive graphical things, but this is, to me, one of the best. In terms of weather, particles, polygons, simulations of rocks, and other age-old nature elements, I mean, it is incredible. Just with the snow and the depth of field that they're using to give the impression of of life going on in it, I, it's just I mean most people never actually get to see one of these environments up close and you could just be like all right well here let's just play around in a open world environment or whatever I would absolutely love to see more games set in these types of environments at number 11 is another interior test. This one a little bit smaller of a space, but utilizing light a little bit more. Frankly, this is a very normal looking apartment for somebody who has a little bit of extra money living in like Manhattan or something. So while most of us are jealous, even though it's a tiny little space, it's also not out of this world and shows us how well this incredible engine can handle such normal stuff. For good measure, they've even just got a laptop on a table to show you just just how normal stuff can look. And frankly, if somebody just told me this was shots of an apartment, I would just believe it. At number 10 is something a little bit different than anything we've looked at so far. A demo from Storm S showing us a pilot tray, which shows us a pilot in some type of a ship doing calculations or, you know, whatever. And then it shows us a city, a very futuristic one with lots of ships and beautiful, incredible ray traced reflections. I mean, frankly, it is just a really, really cool buildup of an area of Chicago with some utopian buildings. It's really neat. At number nine, it's a similar test to the cheeseburger test. This one by Pink Pocket TV. Frankly, one that actually is a little bit more impressive because of the polygon composition of a donut compared to that of a hamburger. Frankly, sprinkles are a lot more complex than the top of a hamburger bun, but still, someone made a script that spawns a million donuts and it does not slow down the engine at all. It's just like, ah, fine, check out all these donuts. At number eight is a Lumen and Nanite test from IRAM Gamer, which shows us some military vehicles in desert situations with some various types of lighting. Frankly, there are times that it's hard for me to believe I am looking at a real-time simulation. But on top of that, like, to be frank, it's actually just a cool-looking thing. Beautiful photography of military equipment, which I don't normally consider to be the most incredible subject for photography, done in all these varying types of light that really bring forward this texture and feeling of use. At number seven is this quote unquote quick test where Saga Design sat down and spent an hour sketching out a place to test out Lumen to show us lighting. But in truth, let's just talk about how beautiful this thing is that this person made in an hour. This tree and the cherry blossoms and the grass and the soft golden lighting, as well as the shadow on all of the rocks behind it. This is incredible. If I came across this in a game and it just looked like like this in a spot, I'd be like, Jesus, how are we here? This is incredible. At number six, Ayub Attach gives us a reason to put our damn seatbelt on on the airplane. Holy crap, it's a plane crash simulation, and Unreal 5 not only makes it look cool as hell, but also terrifies the ever-loving crap out of me. I will never take my seatbelt off in a plane again. I do not want to be any of those people. At number five, Burza Games gives us a nanite and lumen test, which gives us this totally otherworldly environment. Kind of a glass underground city or chrome or something very reflective with a ton of polygons. That's all that really matters. I don't know if I'd call it cyberpunk, but I don't know if I'd not call it cyberpunk. It reminds me very much of traditional architecture, maybe some Middle Eastern architecture, but it's all reflective and it's all got this sort of disco ball thing going. I don't, I 
I don't know. It's insane, whatever it is. It's also a billion plus polygons with all of that reflection and light stuff going on. Just wow. At number four is a demo by Christian Dolby, which shows us an apartment out on the desert, and it is frankly shocking how real it looks. Part of the reason it looks so good is that the interior of the apartment that the shot starts in is imperfect. There's signs of wear, the materials are very rustic, the doors are kind of messed up, the walls got cracks in it, and it's just basically selling it. It is a beautiful image, and amazing that it's happening in real real time. At number three is an amazing jungle scene labeled a tropical hillside in a demo by Melheim Sphere. What's really so astounding about this one is just the sheer amount of detail there is. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of the feeling I got jumping into the jungle in Crisis way back in the day because it is that level of increase in my expectation in terms of graphic. Again, it's Nanite and Lumen that are causing these things and it's amazing. At number two, Scion T Design remade, or rather made something inspired by Silent Hill and showed us both nighttime and daytime environments for it. And it is incredible. I would kill to play the Silent Hill game this guy is envisioning. What this thing looks like in different lighting too just demonstrates how insane lighting can be in the Unreal Engine. We get beautiful nature, worn out, but not particularly scary town. And then we roll in that far and it's just terrifying. Someone put this guy in charge of one of these games. I would absolutely take that. And finally, at number one is a demo from Victor Allman called Demon's Gate. Now, this is by far one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It looks like something out of Dark Souls or something along those lines, but the environment is so detailed on a level of something we just haven't seen before. But you throw in this candlelight with all these puddles on the floor and refracting liquids on stone with the chains all over the... It is just a sight to be seen. Playing through something that looks like this would be insane. When I was little, I could have never imagined seeing something like this even made by computers, let alone being a real-time simulation. You could, in theory, have a game inside. But what do you think? Leave us a comment, let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe, and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I am Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.